Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're actually going to look at how we can actually install Firebase into our iOS apps, not using Cartage or Cocoa Pods, but by using Swift Package Manager. So recently, um, Google um, basically released the capability to basically add Firebase into your apps using Swift Package Manager. So let's jump straight into the tutorial and see how we can do this. All right, cool. So basically, if you go on to the link, I'll put this in the description box as well. Or uh, if you just basically search for Firebase Swift Package Manager, you'll basically get presented with this page where you're actually um, given the installation um, steps. But what I want to do in this video is kind of just show you how simple it is to basically get this set up with Swift Package Manager and things that you need to basically look out for. So we're going to look at how we can actually install Firebase Crashlytics and Firebase Analytics as well. So if you just basically look at the requirements in the installation guide, you just scroll down, and um, you can see how it basically also explains how you can remove Cocoa Pods by running this command. But I'm starting with a brand new, pro a brand new fresh project, so I don't need to run this. So all we need to do is first of all, we actually need to add this linker option for the analytics. So in order to do that. We're just going to go into our Xcode project, click on the project, then we're going to click on build settings, and then in the search bar, we're just going to basically search for linker, like so. And then in the linker flags, so in the other linker flags row here, what we're going to do is we're just basically going to add that value. So if I just double click on this, I should get this pop up. I'm going to hit plus, I'm just going to basically just paste that in. So just copy this. Okay, cool. Sweet. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is we basically now need to actually add in the Swift package in Xcode and it's very simple to do. So all we need to do, if you just scroll down, you'll see that there's a bit here about the Firebase GitHub repository. So if we basically just copy this link here with the URL, I'm just gonna hit copy. And then in Xcode, if you just go to um, File, Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency, and then paste that in and then hit enter and then or you can click next and then we'll basically get the option here where you can choose whether you want to basically clone a specific version or if you want to clone a specific um branch or if you want to clone a specific commit i'm just going to basically stick to the default which is up to next major and just hit next now this may take a while because what it's actually doing is it's basically cloning um, all the packages that it needs. So don't be alarmed if this does take a second. So I'm just gonna leave this to do its own thing. All right, cool. And now that that's actually finished, you'll actually see here that you actually get to actually choose which products you want from the package. Now you get a list of all these um, products and I will have um, future Firebase videos um, coming up very soon. So stick around for that. Um, but all we're gonna do is we're basically going to focus on basically installing analytics and crashlytics. So all we need to do is basically select analytics and select crashlytics. And then now that we've got these two um, options selected, um, we just need to hit finish. And what this is gonna do now is, I don't know if you can see on the left-hand side, but it's actually going to basically resolve. So basically get those packages and actually add the Swift packages to our project. And if you go into your project here and you look at the build settings, you should see here that you can now see the Firebase iOS SDK. Now, if you made a mistake and you want to add like packages or remove packages, leave a comment in the comment section below. But the only way that I know to do this is if you remove the package like so, and then you re-add it. So if I just go to Xcode and then if I just go to Swift Packages and then add the package dependency in again, and then when you add it in, you're able to basically make your selections again. But if you know a better way of doing this, then I'd love to hear it and uh, put a comment in the comment section below. So when you get to this bit here, if you made a mistake, then you can basically choose the correct packages that you want. All right, cool. So we're just gonna basically add this in now like so. All right, sweet. So what we're gonna do now is we're basically going to actually go to the Firebase console and actually set up that side of the things. So we can actually hook up the Firebase console to our app. So if you just go on to your browser and if you just basically just go to console.firebase.google.com, I'll put a link again in the description box. So if you just click on add project, you'll basically get this form that you can basically fill out. Now I'm just gonna call this um, YouTube test 
to okay cool and you'll basically get told what google analytics enables if you want it so you can either turn it on or you can turn it off um for this case i'm just gonna leave it on um, just for the sake of it and then what you can do here is you can actually link it to a google analytics account and um, now obviously you can just choose a default or if you're working with a specific google analytics account then you can actually select it from the list here or create a new one and now you can create a project so what's going to happen now is Firebase is going to basically create a project for you. Um, so we can actually start to set up the other thing. So let's let it do its thing. All right, cool. So now that's finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit um, continue. And then what that's going to do now is it's going to basically take us into our dashboard. So as you can see on the dashboard, we've got our sections for build, uh, release, analytics, and also engage. So these are a bunch of different products now. I'm not going to go into detail in this video about all the products, but I do have videos that do touch some of them. So I guess we'll cover that in a future video. But what we want to do is we now want to actually get started by adding our iOS app to Firebase. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to hit on iOS here. So click that. And then the bundle identifier here needs to match the bundle identifier in your project. So just so you don't make a mistake, if you go to your Xco project and if you just click on your target, and then if you just basically go to sign in capabilities or you can find it in the general tab, you just copy the bundle identifier from here and then just paste it into here. You can give your app a nickname. So it's optional if you wanna give your app a nickname. So this may be if you have multiple apps so you can distinguish like which app it is that you're looking at. You can also give your App Store ID as well if you have your app on the App Store to basically provide that information if it needs to use it for one of the other features. But I'm not gonna provide these two because my app's not on the App Store yet and um, I don't really need a nickname. So I'm gonna hit register. So once that's finished registering, what it's gonna do is it's gonna basically give you something called a Google services dash info.plist file. Essentially what this file is, is it's basically the link between the Firebase console and your app. So it's really important that you download this app and add it properly into the project like what we're gonna do now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to download this file and then show and finder. I'm just gonna drag it onto the desktop. All right, cool. And for you, it won't have this number one. And um, the reason why it has a number one for me is because I've got too many of these files for different projects. So I'm just going to basically just make sure that it's spelled exactly like Google services dash info .plist. So it's really important that it's spelled like this. So what we need to do is we actually need to drag this into our project. So I'm just going to dismiss that. And then you just basically get your plist file and just drag it into your project. Like so. Make sure that copy items if needed is selected. And you select the target and create group. Finish. All right, cool. So now this is in our project which is exactly what we want, cool. So now that we've done this step, we're going to go on to the next step. So now the next step is actually adding Firebase um, using CocoaPods, and you can see there's a link here for Swift Package Manager, but we're gonna bypass this because we're doing that in this video, so hit next. And then finally, what we wanna do is we want to actually configure Firebase. What you wanna do is call this when your app launches for the first time. So essentially what this firebase.configure line is doing is it's basically setting up Firebase. So this basically checks for the plist in your project. And then if it finds that plist, it links it to the correct Firebase project in your console. So what we need to do is we need to go into our SwiftUI project and then in our app where we have the main entry point, now you can see here that we actually don't have an app delegate because we're using uh, SwiftUI's you know, main entry point here. So what we could do is we could do this where we basically say init and then in the initialization, we could configure Firebase here, but I don't wanna do that. And the reason why I don't wanna configure Firebase here in the initializer or alternatively, when the window group appears, we could also, when the content view appears, the reason why I don't wanna do that is because let's say in the future if we need the capability to basically work with like i don't know uh push notifications or any other capabilities that uses um methods swizzling we can't actually ask to access that in swift ui at this time of the recording so i'm going to before wwdc uh 21 so if it changes I was the one who took the risk to record this so what we need to do essentially is we're basically going to like um create an app delegate and use a property wrapper to basically access an app delegate. 
So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually import Firebase. And as you can see, because we selected analytics and crash lakes, we basically get all these um, you know, modules that we can basically import. We only need to import Firebase for what we're doing now. So let's import Firebase. And then now that we've imported Firebase, I'm going to do a bit of typing and then break this down. So essentially, what we're using here is we're basically creating our own app delegate. And then we're actually using Swift UIs. Um, well, not Swift UIs, but we're using a property wrapper, UI application delegate adapter to basically adapt our app um, in our Swift UI app to basically use the app delegate that we defined above. So let's say, for example, if we have to work with like push notifications or any other functions that have the delegate functions within uh, the app delegate, we can actually now access this and use this. So the next thing we need to do to actually basically box this off in terms of the setup is we need to basically call the function to configure Firebase. So we're going to say Firebase app. So configure all right cool so now we've actually got our app hooked up to firebase so now what we can do that we've added this in is we can basically go back to our setup and hit next and then we can hit continue the console all right cool now what we want to do now to actually test that this is like properly actually hooked up to firebase is actually implement crash lakes so what we're going to do is we're actually going to force a crash in our code to basically trigger at the crash lakes so the first thing we need to do to do that is we need to go to crash analytics and then you should see here that you'll have a button saying that you need to enable it so let's click this button so what's going to happen now that we click this button is that this is going to basically listen to when we actually send a crash and when it picks up a crash it will actually show us a page which basically lists all our crashes within it so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to continue with setting this up. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to set up our app to basically have a run script that uploads our dsims. So essentially what a dsim is, is it's basically like a file that allows Crashlytics and other, you know, crash reporting tools to basically figure out where your crash happened and to make it more readable to us as humans because if we don't upload the dsims we might get crash reports that really don't make any sense to us so what we're going to do to enable that is we're going to go into our build settings and then we're basically going to look for our debug information format now by default the debug option doesn't actually enable um, dsims so this is a preference in terms of like what it is you want to do now for this case i'm actually going to turn this on for release and debug so that when the app crashes in debug i can basically send dsims as well and collect those crashes so now that we've turned that on for the debug information format and the next thing we need to do is in our build phases at the very end we need to actually add, add a script so that crash lakes can basically send these dsims whenever a crash occurs so what you want to do is hit the plus button and then hit new run script phase and then in here just double click it so you can edit it and then just to make it clear we're just going to say crash lakes run script like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to add the script in here. All right, cool. And now what we need to do is we need to actually add a script in here. Let's go back to the documentation. And if you just scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that there is actually a script here that we can copy. So this is a script that allows us to basically upload our symbols. Now you can actually put in the actual symbol script in your project directory, but I find that this is just a lot easier to do and manage. So I'm going to copy the script from here and I'm going to paste that in here. Okay, cool. And one thing that you'll need to do as well is on the input, input files, you need to basically add in this path here. So you want to add in the build underscore built underscore um, products underscore directory slash and then info plist path. So it can basically get the um google um services p list all right cool so now that we've added that what we're going to do is we're just going to build the project and just see if it runs okay okay cool so just to double check we're just going to basically go back to our dwarf dsim so i'm just going to type in here dsims to make sure that it's set properly 
Yeah, it's fine. I'm just to double check on my project if I also go to vSIMs. So on my project, it's actually not set up the debug one. So I'm just going to change that to dwarf with vSIMs. So my project and my target both have the exact same setup. All right, cool. So what we need to do now is we actually need to force a crash to actually see our crash in Crash Lakes. So if I just go into my content view, I'm actually going to write a, I'll do it, in, I'll actually do it in here. So in the app delegate, I'm actually going to write some code that I know will crash. Now it's important that you write this code after the Firebase.configure because we want the Firebase app to be configured first and then we want to basically send the crash, well, force the crash. So let me just create a property here. So let X. All right, cool. And I'm guessing you can see, I guess you can see what the problem is with this code that I've written. So essentially, Y is going to be, well, X is nil and we're forced on wrapping X and trying to put it inside a Y. So it's going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically just run this. So in order to actually make this um, appear in Crash Lakes, you may need to actually run the app first. So you have to run the app first on a simulator or your device, which is what we're going to do now. Cool. And as you can see here, that we've basically got it in our logs that essentially, you know, unexpectedly found nil when trying to wrap the optional value. So now that this has basically caused the crash, we're going to stop. What we need to do now, essentially, is we actually need to run the um, app, I would say at least maybe two to three times to actually make sure that the crash gets sent. So I'm just going to open this up and then just basically crash it three times. All right, cool. So now that I've made that crash three times, so what we're going to do now is we're going to basically disable the code that we use to basically force the crash. So let's just disable this. And I'm actually just, rather than disable, I'm actually just going to take it out completely because we don't need it. Let's actually run the app again without this um, crash in it. And what's going to happen now is it's actually going to collect those crashes that happened and it's actually going to send that to Crash Lakes. So it will do that now. All right, cool. So now that's run. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically just run that one more time to make sure that it definitely sends it. So let me just stop that again and then just basically reopen it. All right, cool. So now if we go to our portal in Crash Lakes, now this may take a second for it to pick it up. Well, a second, but that was rapid. But <laughs> so as you can see, it's basically now picked up the crashes that we actually forced. So what we need to do now is just go into the crash legs dashboard and you can see here that we basically have two crashes that I basically were, was forcing. And because we basically um, sent the DSIMs and the DSIMs have been collected, as you can see here, and um, what we can do is we can go into the crashes and it will actually basically give us a stack trace and it will actually basically tell us the line and the file as to where the crash was happening. So now we've actually got um, Firebase set up with, you know, uh, Crash Lakes and also as well, it'll actually be set up now with Analytics. So this basically allows us to confirm that we've successfully hooked up our app to Firebase. Now I'm going to close these issues because they're non-issues that I forced and created. So I'm just going to do that now to keep it clean. All right, cool. And as you can see, that's it. So it's pretty simple to basically sell Firebase with, um, you know, Swift Package Manager. And in my opinion, it's pretty clean and it's, you know, you don't get the baggage of all the extra files you get with Cocoa Pods or Cartage and the pitfalls and whatnot. So that's everything for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And if you have any feedback and comments as well, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Obviously, as we're all aware, WWDC is coming up on Monday. So if you're someone who has any interesting content or anything that you want me to cover, then again, leave it in the comment section below or just let me know directly on Twitter. As usual as well, if you've not subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate if you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.